Chapter 30, The Shortcut The bunkmates and their family sat together in the cafeteria. The boys recounted their favorite camp moments, telling their families all about Alex Trebek and the Lice Lab and Gabe's karaoke stardom. Gabe and his mom chatted happily, Wesley's siblings asked endless questions about his summer, and Nikhil's sister tried walking back from the buffet with her tray balanced on her head, which had Nikhil panicking. But Zack didn't talk to anyone. Gabe could see him taking it all in, occasionally rolling his eyes and stabbing at his food almost angrily. The only thing holding him back from making fun of the nerdiness of it all was probably that the parents were there. Who cares what Zack thinks, Gabe told himself. But he still barely ate, even though his tray was filled with delicious, impress-the-parents food. As much as his brain insisted it didn't matter, his heart knew that it did. After lunch, all the families paraded out of the cafeteria and toward classrooms for the presentations. Where's the lake? Zack asked. And the kayaks. I, I can show you, Gabe said. Happy to hear- Hi, Colby. Colby, get- All right, fine. You can get up. Come on. Up. Colby, up. Colby. No, you don't want to come? All right. <clears throat> Sorry. <laughs> I can show you, Gabe said, happy to hear Zack talk and anxious to show him something Gabe knew he'd find cool. Mom, he said. He had to say it a few times to get her attention. She was absorbed in conversation with Nikhil's parents. Zack and I are going to go this way so I can show him the lake. You two go ahead, honey, she said. I'll meet you at the math building. Come on, said Gabe. Here we go. <clears throat> Come on, said Gabe. He cut away from the mass of people and scooted to the right toward the woods. You can actually get to the lake from the field, but this is a good shortcut. As he led the way through the woods, Gabe kept talking, rambling on about how great kayaking was to avoid Zack's silent, piercing judgment. Running ahead meant he didn't have to see Zack's expression, but he could hear Zack behind him, dodging trees, crumpling dead leaves, and jumping over roots. Ow. I can't believe the summer's almost over, Gabe said, and the wedding's really soon, and you already moved to New York. The lake is just up here. Gabe slowed down, but he didn't hear Zack. He glanced over his shoulder. Zack? Zack was about twenty feet away. His body was as stiff as a sheet of ice, and his face was just as drained of color. His arms were up near his chest, and his fingers were spread wide. What is it? Gabe asked. Zack's lower lip began to tremble. Snake, he said quietly, his voice rattling. Snake, snake, snake. With each snake, his breathing became heavier, and his body began shaking more, until he was trembling all over and almost hysterical. Snake? Gabe inhaled sharply, and his body tensed up. Where? Zack motioned with his chin. R right there. By this log. Gabe took a cautious step forward. The snake moved. Zack screamed. The snake curled itself over the log, and Gabe gasped again. It was a snake, all right, long as a yardstick, but very slender. Its body was beige like the log, but covered with thick blood-red bands. Gabe's eyes began to widen. He dared to lean ever so slightly closer to get a better look. Just as he'd hoped, the red marks weren't stripes. They were blotches, and they were outlined in black. He'd recognize that snake anywhere. <laughs> it's an eastern milk snake, he said. Zack moved his eyes from the snake for the first time to look at Gabe like he'd just suggested they invite the snake to dinner. Who cares, you nerd? he yelled. It's going to kill us. No. Eastern milk snakes are harmless, Gabe explained. I know it for a fact, and that's an eastern milk snake. <clears throat> I'm positive. The eastern milk snake moved its tail end rapidly, making the leaves swish, and both boys jumped back. Then it stuck its head in the air and slithered along the log. It's okay, Gabe repeated coolly. It's harmless. He said it both for Zack's benefit and his own. One hundred percent harmless. How, how do you know? Zack asked. 
His body was starting to thaw, but his eyes were still trained on the snake, which was now stretched out along the top of the log. It looked like it could slither into the woods away from camp if only someone gave it a nudge. It was the final Jeopardy question in our color war Jeopardy. Gabe slowly, deliberately bent down. He picked up a long stick. <clears throat> it's a harmless snake, native to this region, but rarely seen at camp. He took small, light steps toward the log. The snake didn't move. And it sounds like it goes with your breakfast cereal. Breakfast cereal, said Zack. He stared with awe and fear as Gabe reached the stick out toward the snake. Milk snake. Cereal and milk. Harmless, Gabe reminded himself one last time. He poked the snake with the stick. Both boys held their breath. The milk snake adjusted itself as though it was tired, but knew it had to wake up. Gabe poked it again. This time, it slithered slowly down off the log and into the woods. When the very tip of its tail was out of sight, Gabe closed his eyes and let out a deep sigh. Zack laughed nervously. Cereal and milk, he said. Gabe snickered. The two boys stood there staring at each other from opposite sides of the log, laughing out of relief. I'm so glad you knew that was harmless, said Zack, or, or else I would have totally freaked out. Gabe raised his eyebrows. Would have, he said. Zack rolled his eyes and shrugged one shoulder. Okay, I guess I did freak out a little. A little, Gabe said. After glancing into the woods to make sure the snake was gone, Zack hopped to the log and gave Gabe a light punch in the shoulder. His arm was still shaking. Okay, I was really scared. But you weren't. You went up and picked it with you went up and poked it with that stick. Gabe shrugged and felt himself blush. I knew it was harmless from Camp Jeopardy. Damn, Zack said, shaking his head and smiling. I don't know what would have happened if you weren't such a nerd. Gabe tried to think of something Zack might say. No biggie. It's cool. <laughs> and it was. <clears throat> Chapter thirty one. Baby, hush up. Chapter 31. Family. And then, said Zack, as Carla buttoned his tuxedo jacket, the snake kind of hissed at Gabe, but he didn't even flinch. It didn't really hiss, said Gabe. He stepped up next to his dad, who was tying his bow tie in front of the long dressing room mirror. But he did move his tail around in the leaves, and it sort of sounded like a rattlesnake, which was scary. But Gabe wasn't even scared. He just said, dude, this is a milk snake. Eastern milk snake. This is an eastern milk snake. And it's harmless. And then he got a stick and poked it. And the snake looked like it wanted to attack. Well, it really just looked like it was yawning. And Gabe poked it again. And then it slithered away. And then we went to Gabe's logic class and he told his teacher that we saw a milk snake. And the teacher used a walkie-talkie to tell the camp director. And then everyone was talking about it. It was the first time someone's seen a milk snake on the campgrounds in over 20 years. The animal science teacher was really jealous and wanted me to show her exactly where he saw, where we saw it so she could go looking for it. Zack joined Gabe and his dad in front of the mirror. And when we walked to his other class, all these girls were saying hi to Gabe like he was a celebrity. <clears throat> Gabe blushed. They just knew me from karaoke and the hairstyles activity. And this girl Amanda kept telling everyone that she was the snake killer's best friend. Gabe shook his head. Amanda was newski. Zack went to stand behind his mom, who was putting on her lipstick. And then, in his poetry class, Zack said, Everyone read poems that they wrote, and Gabe's was the best one. The rhymes were all really good, and it was all about camp, but he didn't have anything about the snake in it because he wrote it before we saw the snake. Carla smiled at the two boys with her newly read lips. I'm so proud of you, Gabe, she said. Both of you for being so brave. Gabe's dad bent down and touched Gabe's hair, which was gelled just like Zack's. And I'm just as proud of you both as I was the first time I heard the story, he said, giving Gabe a kiss on the forehead. And the second, and the third. Carla laughed and took off the apron she was wearing over her wedding dress. Her sister, Zach's aunt, helped pin a short white veil into her hair. It's a great story, said Carla. I'm not tired of it yet. You had to see this snake, Mom, said Zach. It had these red spots all over it. Outlined in black, said Gabe. That's what made me sure it was an eastern milk snake. 
He knew it from Camp Jeopardy, said Zack. I invited the snake to the wedding, Gabe's dad said, but he had a prior engagement. Gabe and Zack cracked up. But uh, are my two best men ready? Gabe's dad asked. Some people are waiting for us to get married. Okay, said Zack. We'll tell you the rest later. The four of them held hands as they walked to line up for the wedding ceremony. Gabe knew that this was just the beginning. Chapter 32 Back Home Awake with his eyes closed and the lights out, Gabe absorbed the night back in his own bed. School started in the morning, which meant the summer was officially coming to a close. What a summer it had been. The sound of crickets coming through the open window was quieter than it was at camp, and despite the breeze, the air was stickier. He smelled coffee rather than grease, and since his mom had already shut off the TV and gone up to her room, there were no distant voices like the counselors in the clearing. Gabe put on his glasses to look at the time. 12.02 a.m. It was later than when he'd snuck out of bed to kayak to Dead Man's Island, but not as late as when the UFO landed and broke color war, or as late as he and Zack had stayed up the night of the wedding. He wondered if Wesley was talking in his sleep right then, and if Nikhil was starting a new book at the end to make sure it worked out okay. He took off his glasses and tried once again to fall asleep. But after a few minutes, he put them on again and got out of bed. He tiptoed downstairs and jiggled the mouse to wake up the computer. Pressing lightly on the keys so as not to make any noise, he started to type a letter that he'd print out and send to four people. Nikhil, Wesley, Amanda, and Zach. I don't really have anything to write about yet, because school only starts tomorrow. But I'll keep writing and telling you everything, especially the nerdy stuff. You have to write back. I was so busy with the wedding that I didn't get to send you a copy of my final poem like I promised. Here it is. A Camp Sonnet I know some people wouldn't think it's cool to go to camp at the SCGE. Because you're spending summer time in school and learning logic proofs and poetry. It's true that here we exercise our minds and sing about the countries of the earth and learn past the 19th digit of pi and build a lab to study Lysa's birth. A rocket crashed our field day like a bird and Wesley did his math asleep at night. Some people think these givens make us nerds. At first I worried logic proved them right. But if nerd camp's what you call six weeks of fun, that only proves that nerds are number one. And that's the end of our book. I hope that you guys liked it as much as I do. I've read it for most of the years that I've been teaching and I always think it's so fun. I love the characters. I love Gabe and Wesley and Nikhil and I'm glad that I got to share it with you guys. I want to reveal to you what our next book will be. Hold on. We're not going to start it today, but I will um, get to read probably at the end of this next week, the first chapter. And our book will be bah, 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 The One and Only Ivan. I have heard amazing things about this book, and I am very excited to get to read it with you guys. In fact, how about I read the back of the book right now as a little preview. Ivan is an easygoing gorilla. Living in a shopping mall, he has grown accustomed to humans watching him through the glass walls of his domain. He rarely misses his life in the jungle. In fact, he hardly ever thinks about it at all. Instead, Ivan thinks about TV shows he's seen, his friends Stella and Bob, and painting. Then he meets Ruby, a baby elephant taken from her family, and she makes Ivan see their home and his own art through new eyes. When Ruby arrives, change comes with her, and it's up to Ivan to make it a change for the better. So, I'm excited to start reading that with you guys next week, and I hope you guys have a great weekend. Bye, fourth grade!